you're here with us here today. This is a very special day. We're going to do something a little different, and we're going to take the Lord's Supper together, and we're going to give you an opportunity to give a testimony. So here in just a few minutes, you be thinking about if there's something you want to thank the Lord about and say, thank you, Jesus, for what he's done in your life, and you say that. And so, so today, um, as we begin to do this, I want you to take your Bibles and turn, if you could, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and just get ready. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, that's, that's where we're going to kind of camp out. But while you're turning there, I want to explain a few things about the Lord's Supper. And that is that the Lord's Supper is a practice that Jesus put in place as one of the ordinances uh, of the church. There are two ordinances, big fancy word of the church. It's baptism. And so we're going to baptize people at the end of this service. Now, Jesus said, if you've prayed to receive Christ, for example, if earlier you prayed to receive Christ, then it, my encouragement to you is we will send you home with a towel. <laughs> my encouragement to you is to make your way over here and be baptized at the end of our service. Every first Sunday of the month, we do a baptism service. And so we're doing it today at the end of the service. So if you pray today, or if you did during, we had a lot of people make decisions during the At The Movie series. If you're, you're here today, we'll send you home with the towel and you know, wet head and you can get out of here and you can go to the house and do this for the Lord. You say, well, I'm not ready. I don't want to do that. And that's between you and God. But if you're not ready, it's, it's a step. And you're going to see here in a minute about the Bible, what it, it describes of being prepared to take the Lord's Supper. And so if you're unwilling to be baptized, then today you're going to see in a minute an unworthy manner. You don't, you're not ready to take the Lord's Supper today. So until you make steps, until you take steps, it's not enough to pray with me. You've got to take steps of obedience, steps of repentance in your life. So my encouragement to you to do that. And so we do this as one of the ordinances. We're doing both of them, the Lord's Supper and baptism. And so the reason that we do this, the Bible calls a church. We may be members of Circle J Cowboy Church. If you said this is your home and this is where you want to be, then, then this is it and this is the, you're part of this body of Christ. And we're going to do everything we can for people to know God. At the dog trials today, we're going to be sharing the gospel so people can come to know God. And we have these small groups. We've got a couple more weeks of going, and we encourage you to get those in. We're going to take a break for Christmas. That's how you grow spiritually. You just don't pray a little prayer. You need to grow spiritually and be set free from, from some things in your past. And then in January, you can discover your purpose. Why in the world you're here and in the body of Christ, we can make a difference together. Our government is not the answer. Our government is not our hope. Can I get an answer? Ain't no way. Our government is not our hope. Listen, our money is not our hope. Our money is not our hope. Listen, the hope of the world is the local body of believers. The local church is the hope of the world. Can I get a good amen right there? That's us. There is no plan B. Plan A is what he put us here to do, to reach and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, grow them up spiritually. So, and he says, I'll be with you as you're making a difference for the local church. We are the hope of our nation. The local church is the hope of the world. And so when we come together here and just pause and say, thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done in my life, it's a powerful thing. So why do we do the Lord's Supper? Three reasons. We do it. He says, as often as you do it, remember me. So busy. <laughs> We're so busy. And we don't stop enough to say, thank you, Jesus, for everything you did for me on the cross. The second reason we do the Lord's Supper is to receive strength from him. And sometimes you get at the end of yourself. And, and, and I, I know right now of families that aren't here, that should be here, that could be here. But Satan is blowing their marriage apart, their kids apart, and there's victory after victory after victory being won right now. This world is a battle, and decisions and choices that we make are going to determine whether you go to heaven or hell. 
And it's not patty cake. This world is not a deal you just go through and just kind of flippantly, well, I'll go to church if I want or I'll, I'll do it on my terms. I'll do it when I get ready. And you don't have things right with the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and you'll go to hell. And you think you can do it on your own strength and your own understanding. You can't. And so the Lord's Supper is a place where we get things, we examine our hearts, and we get a restart, renew, and refresh, and say, okay, God, I've messed up from here. But you seek His forgiveness, and you get strength when we do the Lord's Supper. The third reason we do it is to commit yourselves to His cause. You've been committed to paying for your payments and working overtime or committed to your hobbies and committed to all these things. And you, honestly, when you look at the 24 hours that you spent in your life for the last 30 days, there's a super small percentage of chance that you've really made any difference for the Lord. And here we are coming out of this Thanksgiving season. This is a time where you can recommit your life to the Lord and the cause that He has for you in this Thanksgiving season without Christ. Um, I just... I've been overwhelmed at all the things I'm so thankful for. And so several places in the Scripture, in Matthew 26, 17 through 30, and Mark 14, starting in verse 12, and Luke chapter 22, it all talks about the Lord's Supper and how we can take it. I love Paul's example where you turn to in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to start in verse 27. This whole section of scripture where he says how to take the Lord's Supper and how we're how serious we're to take this, but how you take it in verse 27. I've already shared this with you. It says, Whoever therefore eats of the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the blood and the body of the Lord. What does it mean, an unworthy manner? An unworthy manner means maybe you haven't accepted Jesus Christ. You're still letting the horns of your life grow. <laughs> and you haven't let the Lord come into your life and dehorn you. You haven't let the Lord forgive you of your sins. You're still pushing him off and you're saying, no, that's an unworthy manner. An unworthy manner is you're unwilling to take the next steps that he has in front of you. You're unwilling to follow the Lord and believer's baptism. It's too embarrassing for you. It was not embarrassing for Jesus to hang and die on a cross for you. It was embarrassed for him, but he went through with it. See, if you're going to follow Christ and you're going to take the Lord's Supper today, you've got to be, there can't be unconfessed. That there can't be a thing you're clicking on that nobody else knows about it, and you're going to click on it tonight, tomorrow. You've got to repent you can't have a situation where you've un not forgiven somebody for doing you wrong in your life and take the Lord's Supper today. If you cannot forgive them, that means you're not ready. But listen, in your heart today, no matter what sins are controlling your life, today is a time for you to get right with the Lord. But if you take of the Lord's Supper and don't get right, Right now, before that, it says you'll be taking it in an unworthy manner. You'll be pr guilty of profanity, like cussing, profanity against the body and the blood, making fun of what Jesus did on the cross for you. So it's a serious deal when we get the opportunity to do this. It's a powerful thing. In First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, I just want to read this. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a people for his own possessions, that you may proclaim the excellency of him who called you. And so if you've come to Jesus, you've been called, and you've answered that call. And it says he pulls you out of darkness into that marvelous light. In Luke 13, 3, I want to read that to you. It says, No, I tell you, but unless you repent... That's how you get in a worthy manner with the Lord. You can't go on carrying sin in your life. You can't go on uh, putting everything else first in your life and Him last. You have to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. You can do that today before we take this. And that's the encouragement. That's what He's telling you. Okay, don't just go through this deal. Don't just take this lightly. Take it very seriously. Get your life right with the Lord before you do that. In Matthew 28, 19 through 20, go make disciples. 
and baptize them. So somebody in a worthy manner, somebody that's become a disciple and is going to get baptized or has been baptized. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and you're committed to teach them all that he's deserved that he's commanded you. We're committed to come to church. You're committed to learn the word of God. I encourage you to commit to go to a small group. That's where you're really going to grow spiritually. And behold, he says, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So we're going to do everything we can to offer you steps to know God, to be baptized, to find freedom from your past in small groups. In January, discover your purpose in the growth track. Begin to get on the CJCC Dream Team. Use your gifts in the body of Christ. All these steps are available to you on a weekly basis, but nobody can make you step towards God in a worthy manner. James 1.25 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast. That's 12, I'm sorry. And verse 25 says, Don't be a hearer of the word who forgets, but be a doer who acts that you'll be blessed in your doing. It's when you obey <laughs> that you get blessed. Not when you say, oh, yeah, I need to do that, but you don't take any steps. And so we're going to make it real easy for you to be able to do that. So look back at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I mean, chapter 11, verse 20. He says what we're talking about. Let a person examine. That's what we're to do today. Examine himself. And then... After we examine ourselves, so eat and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks concerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. If we're not doing it in an unworthy manner. And so you say, well, I haven't been baptized. But you're going to. You can at the end of the service. If you can't, then we're going to do it the first Sunday of next month. And so you make sure you're there prepared to do that. And then you say, well, I've got sin in my life. So do I. But before we take this, we need to confess and say, God, I repent. You need to say, God, I'm sorry. I'm never going to do that again. You give me the strength and the power to overcome that, please, in the name of Jesus. And you be right, holy, as he is holy, pure when we take this. Verse 30 says that that's why... So, some of you are weak and even ill, and some have died. <laughs> this is so serious. Verse 31 says, but if you judge yourself truly, then it says we would be judged. We would not be judged. And so the problem with, the biggest problem of why people don't come to Jesus Christ is because of the church. It's because everybody thinks we judge other people. I can't judge you. I can discern as a pastor, and I'm going to hold you accountable. If you allow me to be your pastor, I'm going to encourage you to take steps. And when you don't, I'm going to come behind you and spur you. I'm not much of a preacher, but I am a teacher. And I'm going to lay the profound, holy word of God in front of you, and I'm going to spur on you, and I'm going to dig and rouse in your belly and say, come on, let's go, let's go, take a step, take a step, take a step, take a step. But I'm not going to snatch you. I can't make you take those steps. It's between you and the Holy Spirit to take those steps. And so the only person that you have a right to judge is not me. It's not anybody else. It's not our president. It's not our government. You don't have a right to judge anybody. You can look at fruit, okay? There's a difference in discernment and fruit. But you don't have a right to judge anybody except yourself. So today, you better judge yourself right in a worthy manner. Verse 32 then says, says but when we judge, when it says when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. The Lord judges us, and he's going to discipline us. You read Hebrews chapter 11, and you'll see that. And so what I want us to do, I want to ask the guys coming to help me with the Lord's Supper to come on, and we're going to do this together, and it's going to be a powerful time, and we're going to pray here in a minute and give you an opportunity to get right with the Lord. And if you're going to do that, I encourage you to do that with us. And so there are two things I'm encouraging you to do. 
is number one is your time to get right with God. There's some steps that you haven't taken that the Lord's encouraged you to take, and you need to repent. He's trying to help you become holy and more like Him. There's some steps here in this church that He's called you to do. And you've gone through this whole time, and you, you're finding excuses. That's sin. You need to repent. God's calling you to do something, and you're stepping back instead of stepping forward. Today's your opportunity. There's a sin in your life that you haven't got a handle on, and it's rocking your world. You know, we talk about clicking on things. You know what you're saying that you're clicking on? Fear, worry, anxiety, anger, judging others, trying to hold other people accountable for their actions. And you being mad because they're not acting the way you want. And really in your heart, you resenting them. And I'm going to ask you a question. What's the difference in resentment and forgiveness? Maybe it's because you haven't forgiven them. And every time they do something wrong, you keep bringing up a list. You got a list. You don't just talk about the one thing. You got this time you did this, and then you did this again, and then you did this again, you did that. Now it's the fifth time. Chances are you ain't forgiven them for the first time. And so you, today, when you get this, one of two things need to happen. You need to bow your head before a holy God, and you need to say, God, make me right with you. Or you need to hold your hand up and say, I want to give a testimony and say, thank you. One sentence deal. God, I'm thankful because of this. And so you get that on your mind. You be getting things ready. So as soon as we begin to pass this out, you either bow your head and get things right with the Lord or you hold your hand up and give a testimony. In verse uh, 24, it says, when they took the Lord's Supper, it says, and he gave thanks and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, we've examined ourselves and we're right with you. And I, I'm just so thankful that because if you hadn't have loved me more than yourself and all your prestige and authority, you'd have never come to be born on this earth. And I'm thankful that you knew that even while I was still a sinner, you knew I was going to betray you for 30 years almost. You knew that, but you still died for me because you loved me that much, and I'm so thankful. Lord, you've given your life for us, and we've given our life to you. And we do this right now just saying thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. And you take and eat that bread. Verse 25, it says, In the same way, also he took the cup as during the supper, and he said, This cup is a new covenant of my blood. And he said, This cup is a new covenant. What does he mean there? He's talking about you see, in the old days, and this is where we get church mixed up, they had a Mosaic laws, almost 500 rules and regulations that they had to accomplish. And that's what we think church, Satan wants us to make us go back to the old covenant. And it's all about all these rules and regulations. You've got to do this and that, and, you know, all these things. And that's not what it's about. Now, you see, no matter what happens in our life, we're in this new covenant. And the new covenant is, is that Jesus died on the cross so that you don't have to pay for your sins. Sins have to be paid for. Your sins have to be paid for. Either you're going to pay for your sins for eternity in hell, or you're going to come to Jesus and let Him pay for your sins. And for those of us that have let, given our life to Him, that's what He's saying. He said, this is a new covenant. This is represent, representing the fact of what I did on the cross for you. My blood, He's saying, covers your sins. He said, this cup 
is a new covenant of my blood. He says, do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. And verse 26 says, for as often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And this is for everybody that's come to know the Lord and has taken some right steps towards him. And so, Father, we come to you and we give thanks to you for all the things you've done for us. You are amazing. Nobody loves us as much as you loved us. Nobody's given their life for us. Nobody loves us as much as you love us. When we drink this, Lord, we're remembering what you did on the cross. And Lord, we're not just remembering, we're saying the steps that we're going to take forward for you. That we are, the local church is the hope for America and the hope for this world. And so Lord, this is our commitment, our covenant to you. We're doing this remembering you. We're doing this to receive strength. And we're doing this to, to commit to you and what you're calling us to do. And we pray your blessings as we just say thank you one more time. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.